We are the Salvation Army CBS. Located in Conception Bay South, Newfoundland and Labrador, we welcome you. Join us as we worship together through music and song and a message from God's Word. Now, let's go live to the Sanctuary of the Salvation Army, CBS.
Make it your prayer this morning. Open the eyes of my heart. Eyes of my heart. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Well, we welcome you here this morning for our youth weekend. We've had a fabulous weekend so far, and this is just the icing on the cake here today. I'm going to ask uh, Jamima and Paisley to come on up, and they're going to read the call to worship and scripture with you. We gather today to worship the one who created us, the one who calls us, the one who equips us, the one who loves us without end. With joyful hearts, let us worship God. We have a hope that is a strong and trustworthy anchor for our souls. Hebrews 6 and 19. The next song we're going to sing is a brand new one. It may be brand new for most of you. Um, sing along with us and clap your hands.
Hallelujah. Shout out the praises of our Lord. Do you want to be seated, or I think we should probably sing that chorus another time or two. There's joy in the house of the Lord. How many believe it this morning? How about this? Let's bring it closer to home in the present tense. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. In this moment, there's joy in the house of the Lord. Here we go. Is the team doing great this morning? Yes. Come on, clap your hands again. Let's sing it again. Joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. surely in this place. Do you believe it today? We're so glad you're here. Michelle has already welcomed you, but it's my privilege as well this morning to welcome you to God's house, to feel the warmth of the presence of God and the fellowship of one another. I pray that you will enter into what the Lord has for you today as we gather together. As Michelle alluded to, this is Youth Weekend. And our youth and our children have been having a great time Friday night, Saturday night, and here we are again this morning gathered for worship, and you're in for a real treat this morning as we gather together and we highlight some of our children and youth, the choir. There's a youth choir that's going to sing in a little bit. And as well, we have a guest with us, Pastor Jason Rousel uh, from Port of Grave, Pentecostal, and uh, he's been there for how many years, Jason? Almost four years, and you're the associate and youth pastor there, and we're glad you're with us, my friend. So, uh, a word from his wife, Amanda. He is married, has a wife, Amanda, and Amanda's Michelle's sister, all right? So, you can put the connection together. Uh, Amanda says, because I was looking for some information on Jason. I wasn't getting anything. He wouldn't write me back and tell me anything, only something foolish, and so Amanda chirps in and says, he's got an awesome wife and two beautiful children. <laughs> and honesty is great, Amanda. We're glad you're here as well. And your two children, Chase, who is nine, and Emma, who is three. Jason is from Clarks Beach, been a pastor for 14 years. He pastored in Clarks Beach, Bonavista, Birchie Bay, and now pastoring in Port Grave. A fun fact about Jason Rousel. Are you ready for this? Anybody that stands on this platform and that we invite in as a guest has to be a Toronto Maple Leafs fan. Yes. Is there an amen in the house today? <laughs> well, we're getting close to playoff season, and uh, my good friend from Guelph is here this morning who's rooting for his Pittsburgh Penguins to get in. Dallas, we're rooting too, buddy. I hope it happens for you. But you know what? The Leafs are in, so we celebrate that. Anyway, we're glad to be together. We're glad to be here to worship the Lord, and we're glad to have Pastor Jason with us. Would you welcome Pastor Jason Rousel?
And we will hear from Pastor Jason in a little while. Praise the Lord. Now, the children's choir need to come quickly. All right. Come on, because I can only stall this for so long with so much talking and whatever. Now, we're going to need a mic. If somebody can come and grab a mic to put in front of these children so that they're not lost in the live stream, we need to hear them. Would you encourage them? As we turn our attention um, towards the time of prayer this morning, we're going to have our worship team lead us in a beautiful song, Waymaker, because indeed Jesus is our Waymaker, is he not, every single day of our lives. So we're going to join together and sing that straight through with the help of our worship team. And uh, we just ask you to enter into, indeed, a time of prayer. And after they sing, uh, I will have the pleasure of 
unitedly, leading us all together in prayer.
Father God, we pause in these quiet moments. Hallelujah. And we come before a God who is all-knowing. You are the great I am, the creator, sustainer of all things. And Father God, in spite of that, you took on human flesh. And you came and you dwelt among us. And you had your ministry. You worked out miracles and healing and teaching and preaching all while leaving us a guide for our own lives. You loved us that much that you suffered on that cross. You carried our burdens. Father God, you carried each one of our burdens to that cross so that we may be called children of God. Father God, there are those gathered in this morning that we know are facing trials of the mind, of their health, some maybe of financial concerns, some with family concerns. But Father God, we bring it all before you, even though we may not see it. Father God, you've got it all worked out already. And we lay it all at your feet this morning, knowing and trusting and hoping for miracles within our own families, with our own congregation, within our community, and within our great world. Father God, for our young people, you have entrusted them to us. Each week, parents, grandparents, bring their precious children to us to minister, to teach them your ways. And may we always encourage them. May we always have that kind word for them. May they learn your truths. And may that carry them and sustain them into their adult life. As parents and as leaders and as a congregation, may we uphold them in prayer. And Father God, for Jason, as he brings your word in a little while, may it go forth boldly. May you give him the strength to speak the words that you have given him to speak. And may it not just be words that we hear, lay it upon our heart. May it challenge us, may it encourage us so that we can become more like you, more that you would have us to be, all that you want us to be, because we leave it at your feet. May everything that is said and done in this service this morning bring you honor and glory. And we repeat the prayer that you taught your disciples and we pray together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All right, now we're going to ask the kids to come on up forward. We've got a chorus just for you guys. Uh, so we're just going to get you guys to come up. We'll do the actions together before you uh, sit back down and enjoy the rest of the service. And I'm going to mention to the junior band, too, is uh, you guys, after this song, you guys are on to play. Okay, so you guys can come on up and get ready. All right. Yeah, I'm going to do the actions.
job, everybody. You guys can go back to your seats. I got your sillies out now for the rest of the service, and we're going to, the junior band can get to their places, though, okay? So let's, let's all the junior band get in their space. Encourage the band. All the work and time and effort they put into that, we can't just let them play it once, right? They got to play it again. Come on, you're good. And this one right here got more hair in her lungs than her old man, hey? <laughs> Isn't that something? God is so good. Come on, play it again.
I am pleased to announce that the first week of our self-denial campaign raised a total of $1,493.75. Thank you for giving. For this Sunday, you are asked to place your partners and mission envelopes in the collection plate. I will now invite the ushers to come forward. In Psalm 34:10 says, even strong lions sometimes go hungry, but those of us who seek the Lord will never lack any good thing. We then ask the question, in what ways do we seek the Lord? There are many ways, through our worship, Bible study, fellowship in the house of the Lord, prayer, and even giving. Our giving is an exercise of faith in God's ability and promise to supply our needs. Let us pray. Our Father, we seek through our giving to claim your promise that we will not lack any good thing you have not guaranteed material wealth, but you have vowed to supply our needs. We are grateful. May our offering be acceptable to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
this time, the Wells family is going to come up and give their testimony. Kids, do a good job, but Dad will mess it up. Mess it up. God is so great. God is good. No, Owen, this isn't dinner time. God is great. That's better than good. Hold on, guys. Have you forgotten your manners? Hello, everyone, and welcome to the normacy of the Wells family. Sophia is not. <laughs> what? I heard him. Say it again. Say it again. Sophia is not. No. Oh, what? Do it again. Do it again. Good. That's good. It's good. Take two. Sophia is not normal. Hey! Okay, guys, let's settle down. Remember, people are watching. Also, Charlene asked us to do this, and her boss, Major Chris, is right behind us. We don't want them to figure out what we're really like. What do you mean? What are you talking about? I am an angel. You're not in the Bible. Technically, no, but we are still a part of God's story. Yes, we certainly are a part of God's story. The words great and good are excellent adjectives to describe God's care for us. First, let's introduce ourselves. We are a family of six. Four right here, two are camera shy. Dad, <laughs> Scott, Carter, we have big bro, Rylan, mom, Veronica, and Owen and Sophia. We have come to tell you that God has been an anchor in our family. As a family, we certainly have experienced the greatness and goodness of God, haven't we kids? Yes, I thank God for the Christian school we go to. I thank God for giving us this church. I thank God for giving us salvation. Jesus is in our hearts. One of the greatest enjoyments we have in life is the ability to serve God as a family. To attend this beautiful church and to be involved with everyone and all the activities which bring us closer to God. God is an anchor for our family. We've proven him time and again. We can trust God with every area of our lives. While we aren't the perfect family, there's the regular sibling rivalry, which you may have noticed. However, to be part of God's family, you do not have to come perfect. You just need to come as you are. We can't imagine living life without Jesus as our anchor. Our family would be aimless, but with Jesus, we have peace, joy, and a confidence that he is with us and will guide us. So yes, Owen and Sophia, God is great. Also, God is good all the time. And, and all, all the time, time God, God is good. good. Thank you, guys. Before Pastor Jason comes to bring the word, we're going to quiet in our hearts and we're going to sing Cornerstone.
Amen. Well, good morning, friends. Hope you're doing well this morning. Any of you need an alarm clock? Right? I hate alarm clocks. Like, I despise them. I would like to throw them out the window whenever they go off. I think alarm clocks come from the devil. They have to. And so, anyways, there is a man and a wife, and they are asleep, and their alarm clock goes off. And the husband simply responds with, and the wife gives him a dig in the ribs, you know, that old single to, it's your turn to get out of bed now. So she, figuring she's going to be a good wife, like mine, and she says, you know, I'll get up, I'll get ready, I'll let him sleep in for a little while. And so she goes, and she gets ready, and she comes out. Okay, I'm out, it's your turn. She goes down, and being a good wife, once again, like mine, she goes, and she, she makes this breakfast in the air. Oh, bacon and coffee. Gifts from God. But she doesn't hear him move. There's not a sound. He, he hasn't gotten out of bed. And so she, you know, marches upstairs and she goes in. What are you doing still in bed? Because I'm tired. You got to get out. No, I don't. Oh, uh, yeah, you do. Uh-uh. We got to go to church. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. No. Give me a reason. Why? Why aren't you going? I'll give you two. Nobody there likes me, and I don't like any of them. You give me a reason why I should go. She looks at him and says, because you're the pastor. <laughs> well, it is my joy, my honor, and my privilege uh, to be here with you guys, not just today, but uh, I was here all weekend having some fun with your uh, senior youth, your junior youth, and now I get to talk to everybody else about the goodness of our God. You see, our God is a promise maker, a promise keeper, and a promise sustainer. Would you pray with me? Father, God, as we dig into your word, I pray you would speak to our hearts. Your word is alive, it is living, it is breathing, it is sharper than a two-edged sword. And so God, speak to us today through your word. May you be glorified in your name. Amen. And so as Paisley already uh, read wonderfully, our theme verse for the weekend uh, comes from Hebrews 6 and 19. But we're, we're not going to start there. We're going to go back just a little tiny bit to Hebrews 6 still, but verse 13. You see, God is a promise maker. In verse 13, in the NLT, it starts off with, for example, God made a promise to Abraham. And because there was nobody greater to swear by, he swore by his own name, and he said to him, and then in verse 14, I will bless you greatly. I will multiply your descendants beyond number. You know, sometimes we read the word and we, we kind of just, oh, yeah, okay, God's going to give him a bunch of kids. Well, whoop-de-doo. But he was old. He was, like, really old. If I was in my church this morning, I would make fun of a guy named Bernie. I tell him he's as old as dirt. Now, you got cameras, and I don't know which one's on me, but Bernie, you're old, just in case he's watching. I love Bernie. But even he's not as old as Abraham. He's an old man. And his wife, she's old too. And God has the audacity to say, you are going to have so many descendants that they're beyond number. Our God is a promise maker. Herbert Lockyer, in, in his uh, book, All the Promises of God in the Bible, he counts, he assumes, he figures there are about 7,487 promises found within the pages of Scripture that are from God to man. That's a lot. 
That's a lot. 7,487 promises that God is saying he's going to do something for us. Our God loves to make promises. So then what's our job? If we worship a God who likes to make promises, what are we to do? Well, if we go back another verse into verse 12 of Hebrews 6, it says that we are to follow the example of those who are to receive the promise by patience and endurance. We go to verse 15, it says, Abraham, remember that big audacious promise that God made to Abraham? Abraham patiently waited and received. Patiently waited and he received the promise of God. And we all know waiting sucks. Waiting is horrible. Waiting is so hard. We don't like to do it. This is why we go into stores and we have a million checkouts and we complain when there's only two open because we don't like to wait. We want it and we want it now. But God says, wait. Wait. There was a man and he was working from home. And he's in his office and he's diligently doing his work and he's kind of caught up in it when his little girl comes in. Them little girls can melt your heart. And she goes, Daddy. And he's ready to give her all his money and the keys to the car, except she's only like three, so he can't let her drive yet. She can't reach the pedals. Daddy, will you play with me? His heart is melted, but he's got work. There's, there's a deadline. He can't stop what he's doing right now. And he says, yes, dear, yes, honey, I will, but you need to wait. When I am done I promise you, I will play with you. And though she turns to leave and she goes to walk out the door and all of a sudden she turns around, runs at him and gives him a big old hug. And he says, honey, what was that for? She goes, I wanted to let you know what was waiting for you. Our God lets us know what is waiting for us through all these promises that he gives us in his word. This is why he makes these promises. So we have something to hold on to. But he doesn't just make them. God isn't just a promise maker. God is also a promise keeper. We see in verse 17 of our scripture that because God bound himself to this, the people who were to receive the promise would know, would be perfectly sure that he would not change his mind. God wouldn't change his mind. We use a fancy word and we say God is immutable, unchanging. God cannot change. He was the same yesterday, today, and forever. Our unchanging God cannot lie. And so when he makes a promise, it is going to happen. No matter how audacious it is, like an old man going to have so many descendants, when he says it's going to happen, it does. With our Savior, with our Lord, there are over 300 prophecies of his first coming. 300. There's one that says, you know, he was going to be born in Bethlehem. There was one that says he uh, was going to ride on a donkey. There's one that says he was going to have a friend to betray him, and he would have wounds in his hands, and he'd be sold for 30 pieces of silver. And then those 30 pieces of silver would be used to buy a potter's field. He was told that he would be silent before his accusers, and then he would die with his hands and his feet pierced. Those eight prophecies out of 300. Do you know the odds of that happening? It's crazy. A guy by the name of Pete Stoner, a, a, a statistician, he took 600 of his students to do the math. This has been uh, scientifically approved by the American uh, Scientific Society. And so catch this, will you? The odds of somebody fulfilling just those eight of the over 300, those specific eight, is one with 10 to the power of 21. So that's one with 21 zeros behind it. And that's numbers, and numbers are absolutely meaningless. And like, oh, that's a lot of zeros. Okay, so let's, let's paint a picture for you. A silver dollar, now we don't really have them much, so we got toonies. We're going to say toonies. Can you imagine this great earth giant, massive earth that we live in being 100% covered 120 feet deep 
with toonies. And can you imagine if I marked one of all these toonies that covered the face of the earth 120 feet deep and I marked one, mixed them all up with my giant stubby little tiny fingers, take me a while, blindfolded you and said, okay, go find the one I marked. The odds of you finding that one is the odds of somebody fulfilling those eight. And yet our Jesus fulfilled over 300. You see, we serve the God of the impossible. He can do what he says he's going to do. He is indeed the promise keeper. And this is why our theme verse this weekend can be taken from verse 19. This hope, as the NLT says, or as we read this morning, we have a hope. This hope is a strong and trustworthy anchor for the soul. Why? Because when our word says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, so whosoever believes in him shall not perish but I'll have everlasting life when we read those words, when we read the other words from uh, 1 John chapter 1 where it says, if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive us. We read those words that our God has come to make the dead alive. We know he's a promise keeper and we can have hope. And it can be strong to carry us through whatever we encounter. Dr. Gardner Taylor was a professor at the Harvard Divinity School. And before he taught there, he was a preacher traveling around. And in the Great Depression, he happened to be down south. Electricity had just come on the scene. He's in the church, and there's a a single bulb hanging down, and that's what's lighting the sanctuary. And he gets up to preach, and he's preaching, and they're all having a wonderful time, and all of a sudden... It goes dark. Electricity is a new thing, you know, and so it failed. And he doesn't know what to do. And he's shuffling his papers and he's getting a little nervous. I'm visiting here. I don't know what they do. The lights just went out. It's dark. And all these thoughts are going through his head when all of a sudden someone in the back of the room shouts, Preach on, preacher. We can still see Jesus in the dark. We can still see Jesus in the dark because this hope that we have, this anchor that we have, it doesn't matter what we go through when life is hard, when we come through these trying times and we have problem on top of problem, we can still see Jesus. He is our hope, our anchor for our souls. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for being our hope. He is our promise maker. He is our promise keeper. But he is also our promise sustainer. If we continue in that verse 19, we see that because of this hope, because of this anchor for our souls, we can go in through the curtain into the presence of God and to his inner sanctuary. And we see this picture is from the old tabernacle. And we know the tabernacle was divided up and you had the you know outer courts you had where the gentiles could go where where the different people could go then where just the priests could go and then finally into the holy of holies where only the high priest could go and but once a year and when he had enough blood but we we read this verse and like i said earlier sometimes we, we don't you know really take in what we're reading Because of Jesus, because of what he's done, because of this hope, we too may enter into God's inner sanctuary. And what's even greater than knowing that is what verse 20 says. Jesus is already there. Jesus is already there. And it says he is there as our eternal high priest. That's why he's the sustainer. Because it's for eternity. He didn't just say, well, I'm going to forgive your sins today. I mean, you mess up tomorrow, well, too bad. He didn't say, well, well, maybe, you know, when you first give your heart to the Lord, I'll have a bit of grace. And, and for a year, maybe, maybe, maybe just a year. But then after that, you're on your own. No. Day after day after day, we can come to our Lord. And we can know that he is there already in the presence of Almighty God acting on our behalf saying, it's been covered. 
It's been covered. The price has been paid. He is our eternal hope. We, friends, have a hope that is a strong, trustworthy anchor. Let me end with one last story. Just to put everything in perspective. I remember hearing as a boy a a, a pastor giving this illustration for how long eternity is. And he said, if we were to take every rock on this great earth from Everest down, every rock, and we were to crush it into grains of sand, then train a bird to come and take one grain of sand every trillion years. By the time all the sand of the earth, every grain is gone, eternity is just beginning. See, eternity is for forever. And what's so great about eternity? It's because God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever believes in him would not perish, but have what? Eternal life. That is our hope. That our Savior paid the price for you and for me. For eternity, we'll be able to be with him. A place where there's no sickness, no sadness, no pain, no shame, no guilt, no cancer, no depression, no anxiety, no dementia. All these sicknesses and ailments that we suffer now are but temporary. And in light of eternity, they're just a drop in the ocean. Because one day, we're going to stand before our Lord. And we're going to see him face to face. And we will indeed say those words, it was worth it all. Could you pray with me? Father, God, I thank you for your word. Jesus, I thank you that... This hope that we have in you, that you are indeed our Savior, that you are not ever going to leave us, you are never going to forsake us, that God, you are indeed the promise maker, keeper, and sustainer. Jesus, you are so good to us. So, Father, I pray a blessing upon everyone in this room. God, I pray if there be one here that doesn't know you as their Lord and Savior today, that today would indeed be the day that they too may have this hope. This hope that allows us to see light in darkness. This hope that allows us to to move and live and breathe when we should just give up. This hope is you, Jesus. In your name, amen. Thank you, Jason. The anchor holds
to sing those words again. Thank you, Pastor Jason, for that word of encouragement this morning. And, and I believe an uplift to each of our hearts to know that no matter the journey in our lives, we have this hope as a firm and a solid anchor for the soul. His name is Jesus. And I want to ask you this morning, do you know him? Doesn't matter the darkness in your life, doesn't matter the storms by which you're going through, Christ is our sure and our solid anchor for the soul. It's him who is our constant. When all around us would fail and fall, we can count on Jesus. Amen, church? We can count on Jesus. Is there one here this morning? We can't close this meeting unless we give you an invitation to Jesus today. Do you know him as your Savior? Are you struggling maybe through something in your life today and you're wondering, where are you, Lord? Well, I want you to reach out to him this morning, and I encourage you to do that. Whatever the journey is like today, I want you to know and be assured that Jesus is near, and he wants to walk with you. A sure anchor for the soul. Does that uplift you today? Does that encourage you? Just to know that we are not alone. We are not alone. We can enter into the Holy of Holies. Pastor Jason, Jesus is there. I love that. Just to know that and have that surety today. Worship Him. Come to Him. Let's just make the most of these next few moments together as the Spirit of the Lord speaks and ministers to our hearts, the anchor holds, the anchor song that we sang earlier, Prayer Time, um, Waymaker. Just in this attitude of prayer, we know that he is a great God. And when we don't see him or feel him, we know he's there.
thank you this morning for your presence that we have felt in this place. Thank you, Lord, for the worship that's gone forth. Thank you for your holy word. Thank you for the children. Thank you for the youth. Lord, you've been here working in our midst, moving in our midst. And Lord, we just want to thank you for that. We praise you the miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. Lord, we, we just worship you today, our sure anchor for the soul. We have this hope. Thank you, Lord, for providing that for us. May you continue to speak among us this day. Wherever we go, whoever we are in contact with, Help us to show forth your love, your goodness, your hope that radiates in our lives. Lord, may it make a difference in the lives that we encounter today and every day. I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing another song. How's that? Then we're going to... We're going to stay around. I think there's some families and, that are staying for a potluck luncheon today. We're looking forward to that. But before we close off, I want us to sing this song. And then I have a few thank yous. Myself and, and Miss Charlene have a few thank yous that we would like uh, to do today. And then Claudette Hillier will have a prayer of blessing over each of you again. And uh, blessing over the meal that we will share together. Claudette. How about we sing the goodness of God? I love you, Lord. Your mercy never fails. I love you.
Amen. You can be seated for a moment. I'd like to take a moment just to thank everybody who participated this morning and all of you. You know who you are. Children, youth, and leaders, will you stand? We want to thank you this morning for your contribution to this service. That's right. That's right, Stan. Give a hand. There are a lot more leaders not standing involved in these groups. All the leaders not from even youth the groups children stand. Are, not even the children are standing down there. We, we see can't you. do it on our own. <laughs> We need the leaders to stand. Do you know who you are? Come on. Come on. You th- where are you? That's it. It's two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, okay. We get the point, right? You're here somewhere hiding out. We just want to say that we, we appreciate you. And like Michelle just said, could never be done without you. And you're all appreciated so very, very much. Thank you, Pastor Jason, for coming and being among us salvationists today, this weekend. We're glad that you took the time from your own assembly to be here today with us. And uh, we're thankful for you. We're thankful for the passion that you have in bringing the word so clearly and boldly. And uh, God used you today to speak to our hearts Through that verse of Scripture, we have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. Uh, That leaves us with a lot of encouragement today and a whole lot of hope knowing that Jesus is near us. Would you come up, please? My fellow Leaf fan. Although we lost last night. We lost last night, but man, what an effort, eh? What an effort went into last night's game. I mean, we could talk about this for a while, right? I mean, it went into overtime and, you know, like, yeah. They did get a point, though, right? They got a point, so that's good. You get the point. We're friends, right? Jason, thank you for being here. Charlene, where are you? Come over. We have a little token of our appreciation that we want to share uh, with you, give you, pass along to you on behalf of the youth leadership and uh, children of the CBS Corps. God bless you, and God bless you in your further endeavors in ministry. God will continue to use you. We believe it. Show your appreciation once again for Pastor Jason. We're back again this evening for a regular Sunday evening service at 6 o'clock. Come and join us as I believe the Lord will draw near us again and bless us abundantly. Claudette, could you come up and have a prayer of blessing over us, please? Before we pray... Just want to remind you that next Sunday we will be celebrating here at the CBS Corps our 116th anniversary. So we invite you to come along um, that Sunday or next Sunday to share with us as we celebrate and indeed give thanks for God's goodness to us. And uh, that will be a special day. And Majors Chris and uh, Claudette will be our special guests for uh, next Sunday. So we say thank you to them. Sunday night. And as well, Sunday evening following the uh, service, we will share in a time of fellowship together and probably a cake. There will be a cake. So there got to be a cake. I mean, there has to be a cake for a special celebration. So we invite you to come back next Sunday for our anniversary. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, how good it has been to be in your presence to be in your house, to worship you, Lord, to praise you and to say thank you for your goodness. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you, Lord, for the encouragement that we have received here today. Lord, from the youngest to the oldest in this place, may we always know and remember the hope that is found in you, found in Jesus. 
Thank you, Lord, for being our promise keeper, our promise maker, our promise sustainer, Lord. Thank you for your promises to never leave us nor forsake us. And Lord, as we leave this place today, we know there are many needs, Lord. We don't know what this week will bring. Lord, it's our prayer that you will go before us. And we thank you, Lord, in advance for all that you will do. Lord, if there are needs, I pray your blessing upon every person that is gathered in. Lord, I pray for our children. I pray for our youth. Lord, may there have been seeds planted this week in friendship and fellowship and hearing from your word. Lord, we pray a shield of protection around them. Lord, for all of our leaders, our youth leaders, Lord, we thank you for them. I just ask your blessing upon each one of them. May we all always have that smile. May we live our life as an example to them. Lord, just now as the family share in a time of potluck, we just ask that you will bless the food that has been prepared. Lord, you will bless the conversation around the table. We love you, Lord Jesus, and we thank you for your love. Amen.